Hello chess friends and welcome to Azarov's chess channel and welcome to my series let's find the best next move. So as usual I'm uh, prepared I have prepared for you five examples which you have to solve for yourself. Uh, these are really the sort of um, uh, strategical problems and also tactical problems in the middle game or even in the later stage of the game in the end game and uh, the goal here is for you to solve all of these five problems but please don't use engines uh, when you use engines then you cheat uh, basically your own on yourself you you're not cheating uh, against anyone else uh, try to solve it for yourself take your time uh, i've prepared i think good five examples good five strategical examples and uh, here in this series we are trying to improve our improve our uh, strategic and also our tactical skills in the middle game so let's see the first example here it's why to move find the best move take your time pause the video find really the strategical element here which is i think uh, you can recognize it the problem here is so you see we have um, a white is a piece up but he will he'll probably lose the uh, knight in the next move because the threat is of course bishop takes on c3 with an attack against the rook so try to find here the best continuation um, I hope uh, you can solve this strategic problem it's not really sort of a chess puzzle it's really a strategy problem because uh, when we uh, solve this chess um, um, chess puzzles or this chess tactical puzzles the game is basically over in this particular problems the game is continued but with a huge strategic advantage for one side so uh, I hope you found this move because we have now here this element uh, this so-called uh bad bishop position so we have a bad bishop uh, of blacks here uh it's the bishop on c8 so that's why here the best continuation is to proceed here with bishop on c6 and as i said uh, all of this uh, i said it in my previous videos all of these examples that i use will be in the description below so you can analyze the whole games how the position came to this particular point but now after bishop on c6 and uh, we have b takes c6 there is this positional problem of the bad piece uh, here we have a bad bishop position although of course uh, white will lose uh, the knight in the continuation of the game but uh, the main idea is to get this d4 pawn and these two powerful pawns are controlling here this very powerful d6 so one of the ideas would be to play an outpost on d6 so you see how the position has changed after a simple bishop takes on c6 move let's see the continuation it was a game by ruben file against uh, uh, mikhail botvinik here rook on a4 was played uh, here bishop on c3 bishop on d2 another problem f6 and now castling played by uh, ruben fine so here uh, we have castling bishop c3 d takes c3 and now queen on e1 we have uh, uh, a5 and now after bishop on c3 bishop on a6 but not a problem here uh, i think white has solved all of this strategical problems maybe black can try uh, to play queen on d5 but now this pawn is hanging this pawn is weak you see this bishop's activity has improved but one of the most important things while playing against the bishop is get out of the way of the bishop so not to have some knights rooks pawns on uh, on on this diagonal which is the uh, uh, which is this black uh, light square bishop attacking so this is now i think a favorable continuation we don't have any troubles at all i think we can try even knight on d4 even rook on d4 is possible here with an attack against these two weak pawns and the main problem in black's uh, position is that black is continuing uh, the game with the light square bishop and has his uh, pawns on light squares if the position would have been that uh, white has uh, the pawns on light squares then uh, the, the pawns would be an object of uh, potential attacks by the light square bishop but that's that's not uh, uh, the thing here here we have a perfect battery on the a file we have the possibility to improve our position of the knight and that said if the position allows it maybe to play something like knight on e4 and then if we play in uh, outpost on d6 sort of an octopus knight this would be really game over for for um for black so let's see now another example uh, here i want you also to pause the video and try to find really uh, the best continuation we have again a stri strategic a strategical element i'm going to write it down uh, the element uh, meanwhile you can try to solve this uh, strategy problem okay i hope you found this uh, best move because we have now the so-called opposite side attack game this opposite side attack game uh, is really 
a common position in chess because first of all i want you to recognize this pawn structure in the center we have now the so-called blocked pawn structure in the center uh because uh, you see the pawns are always uh, showing us the direction of the attack and i hope you found this best next move uh, because it's uh, really a natural move in opposite side attack games because the main idea in opposite side game, attack games is to get your f uh, attack much much faster than your opponent so that's why you have to be fast you have to create open files open diagonals for the bishops so you have to improve the position of the pieces and really crack the position on your side where you're attacking so nothing you cannot lose tempos like playing something like rook on d1 and similar ideas you have to be fast and really faster than your opponent because black has also some threats with g5 g4 uh, here will to create this uh, common king's indian attack and that's why here the best move i hope you found also this particular move it's the move b5 cracking the position immediately here after uh, something like g5 you see black is continuing his attack on the queen side uh, on the king side pardon me but now rook on b1 even more supporting our attack here uh, g4 we have bait takes a6 if rook takes then of course this uh, b7 is hanging so that's why here um uh, b takes uh, a7 uh, a6 was played but now very important move rook on b7 g3 we have b uh, h takes g3 h takes g bishop takes g3 rook on um, b8 and now very important uh, here move c6 this game was played uh, by Fabiano Caruana here with the white pieces against uh, uh, pardon me let me see uh, the game against Artem Smirnov here you see after the move c6 uh, Fabiano Caruana has a good position has a good defensive piece uh, the bishop here on g3 and has also the possibility to play on the battery I'm not going to show you the whole game uh, because uh, as I said you can see it in the description below it was more important for me uh, for, and for you to recognize this potential b5 move so first of all you should have recognized here this opposite side attack, attack games in which are the pawns are showing us really the direction of the attack here the pawns on from white's perspective are aiming on the uh, queen side so that's why you have to be fast on your attack with the move b5 so let's see another example here it's a game played by uh, the legendary uh, the legendary Gary Kasparov against uh, Gentaro Gonda and here I want you also to pause the video we have really sort of an open game and try to find the best continuation I hope you uh, will find this best next move because it leads into a very very dangerous attack for black uh, black will have troubles to battle against the bishop pair so here we have the strategical element of the advantage of bishop pair the bishops are aiming of course very dangerously on the um, on the king side here and against this uh, attack uh, against this castle king the problem from black's perspective is that uh, black is lacking of defenders in front of the king so the uh, black doesn't have any knight here on f6 which would be a good defensive piece uh, would defend here is h7 weakness so i hope you found this best next move uh, and it's the move rook on e3 which was of course played by the legendary gari here after rook on e3 we have the possibility to attack with our rook because uh it's all about evaluation here of pieces if we evaluate the bishop here on uh, uh, this light square it's perfectly fine we cannot improve really the position of this bishop we can try bishop on e4 but we have lost the tempo and stayed simply on the same diagonal the same thing with the star square bishop we can try maybe something like bishop on e3 but the position really doesn't change here uh, it doesn't improve the uh, position of the uh, of the uh, at all so that's why we could have maybe played rook on e4 attacking the queen but after queen on e7 we cannot play the common idea to play rook on h4 so you see at attacking the h7 is the main attacking possibility here for white so that's why rook on e3 is much more powerful even it, if it if it doesn't come with the tempo but now after rook on h3 we have really the possibility to attack this uh, uh, h7 and i wanted to show you now the whole game uh, this is uh, one of the rare games that I wanted to show you to the end because this is really an attacking brilliancy played by Gary Kasparov here after g6 g6 had to be played because the immediate threat was to play rook on h3 and then uh, taking the h7 pawn rook on h3 anyway by Gary here we have bishop uh, queen on f6 but now bishop on h6 so with this move rook on h3 uh, black white forced uh, black to 
create some dark square problems here around the king after bishop on h6 we have rook from f to e8 uh, we have queen on g4 rook on c8 but now bishop on g5 you see now the problems in black's position the dark square problems queen on g7 and now of course queen on h4 with the preparation to play bishop on f6 very very dangerous so f5 played by um, uh, by black black is trying also to somehow maybe play something like rook on c7 and cover uh, uh, this uh, h7 weaken so in the game rook on e1 a natural move by kasparov and now knight on a5 with the preparation to play maybe an outpost here on uh, c4 in the game rook on e3 you see how it, important it was for gary kasparov uh, to create this rook lift to, to change the direction of the attack but now after the weakened pawn structure after the move f5 now we have a new target here the move e6 you see um, as i said the strategical plan can always change i've explained it many uh, many times in my previous videos of this series the strategy always can change so first of all we played against this weakness h7 then we played on dark square problems uh, then now we're playing on this weakness on e6 so we have always to recognize the new weaknesses that are created in, in black's position so here queen on f7 was played and bishop on b5 attacking the rook uh, bishop on c6 and now got it took uh, bishop takes knight takes c6 and now very important move c4 with the idea to crack the position here with the move d5 we want this pawn rolling now creating maybe a pass pawn situation queen on d7 and now bishop on uh, f6 very nice move with the preparation to play something like queen on h6 and even some checkmate threats on dark square so um, this black pieces are really used now only as defensive pieces so it will be really a problem in the continuation of the game in the game queen on f7 was played again and now gary finds this very nice pawn breakthrough here with the move d5 e takes d5 rook takes rook takes rook takes on e8 queen takes on e8 but now this pawn takes the pawn d5 and it comes with a tempo which is more important now the knight doesn't have good square so that's why here black tried the counter attack with queen on e1 king on h2 and now knight on e5 very very uh, risky move because now the pawn can uh, continue to push knight on d7 creating sort of a blockade but now gary of course finds the best move queen on c4 getting use of this uh, uh, both of these diagonals so that's why king on f8 had to be played but now very nice move uh, queen on c8 queen on e8 bishop on e7 with the check here we have king on f7 queen on c4 again uh, king on g7 queen on e6 and now g5 and i want you now to pause the video again and find really the best uh, continuation here find the best move which wins immediately for for um for white i hope you found this move this is now a uh, chess puzzle for you to solve and it's the move bishop on f6 because if you take of course with the knight then we can take the queen after knight takes we have here the monster move d7 and this is game over so great great attacking game by the legendary gary i hope you found this particular move so that that was the move that i asked for here this rook on e3 rook lift very important rook on h3 uh, getting this rook uh, very active with the support of the queen the, you see how the queen uh, came into the game also very actively so great great attacking brilliancy by um, the beast from baku okay let's see now another example mm, again i want you to pause the video uh, and try to find the best move uh, it's really an open game uh, both sides haven't castled so far so this could be sort of a strategical element which we can play on to uh, against uh, uncastled kings and similar ideas okay take your time uh, just don't use engines as i said if you use engines you cheat on yourself nothing special i think if you solve this puzzle with chess engines try to uh, get access to, into this very important uh, strategical element and now we have this so-called simple threat uh, element which is well, sometimes underestimated a little bit in chess because the simple threat is really a powerful motif in chess and here it's what is a game played by sergey karyakin with the white pieces and he continued of course in the best man away he played the move b4 because now you see with a simple threat whenever you can calculate the simple threats in chess uh, black is forced to do something of course bishop on d6 d6 doesn't work because we have uh, c5 so that's why bishop on e7 was played and now c5 again a simple threat after knight on d5 we have knight on e5 again simple threat the queen has to go somewhere we have queen on um, 
uh, Queen on C7, but now Sergei Karyakin played Queen on A4, uh, really forcing now the king to go to F8, and this is now the problem. Black will never castle in this particular position, so that's why uh, I think White has a favorable game. In the continuation, Knight on D3 was played. Here we have A6, and now Sergei Karyak can simply castle it, and now we have the possibility to get use of the D file, improving maybe the position of the bishop somehow, uh, maybe even create a pawn majority pawn breakthrough here on the queen side. So you see, this is I think a favorable favorable middle game for white because black would need many tempos like g6 king on g7 in order to connect his rook so that's why uh, white can use this couple tempos and activate his pieces okay this was the move uh, for you to find as said here let's go back um, to this particular critical moment after uh, after d takes c5 bishop on c5 i hope you found the move before I'm sure many of you have found this move. This was really the most important uh, strategical element. As I said, we have this uh, simple threat here. So let's see now uh, the last example. Uh, here it's a white to move. After this move, black can basically resign. It's a game played by Ding Liren. Uh, try to find the best next move. Uh, this is really a chess puzzle. It's a chess tactic here, uh, which you can apply. And after this move, it's game over okay take your time again don't use engines and the best move here uh which is played by uh, ding luren is the move h7 unbelievable move uh, even stockfish my stockfish engine doesn't recognize this move immediately unbelievable how great this tactical move is after h7 uh if the king takes of course then we have rook on h4 you have to go with your king somewhere and then we have uh, rook on h8 to checkmate so if you try bishop on h7 then the same idea rook on h4 uh the idea is now if maybe something like if you play something like b5 then we have a very powerful move bishop on d3 you have to get rid of this uh, bishop but now if you take again this tactical element this very nice corner made here on h8 if you don't take then of course you get checkmated here by the bishop on h7 Okay, uh, I want you to maybe send me in the description below, or pardon me, in the comment section, uh, how many of this chess strategy puzzles and this chess tactic puzzles you have solved. I think these are, were really good examples. We'll continue to make this, uh, I think, more often because this uh, tactical and this strategical puzzles are really uh, something that you have to solve in your own chess games because they happen to you most of the times and if you don't recognize them, you probably lose some games or even draw, draw some games which are completely winning for you. And I think in this series, we'll try to improve our tactical but also our strategical and planning skills in the middle game. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Meanwhile, you can watch my other previous videos from the series from this uh, Find the Best Next Move series. And you can also watch my Basics in Chess series in which I show you all of the possible uh, strategic elements and the tactical elements that can happen in an opening stage, uh, middle game stage or the end game stage. And you can also uh, watch my very interesting How to Spot Chess Tactics uh, series in which I show you um, very nice and effective ways to recognize tactical possibilities in your own middle game. And you can also subscribe Subscribe to my channel if you like this content. Thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course.